Hi, my name is Jeff Feige. I'm with uh, DriveLock, and today I'm going to show you how to install SQL Express, DriveLock Enterprise Service, our DriveLock Management Console, the DriveLock Control Center, all on a standalone Windows Server 2008 R2 Active Directory uh, machine. There are a couple of caveats installing um, the SQL Express directly on an Active Directory controller. We'll work through those. Um, if you are installing this on a 2008 R2 server that is just joined to the domain, um, your installation procedure is a little bit easier, but you can follow along as well. So the first thing we're going to do is connect to our um, Active Directory server, our 2008 R2 server. We're going to be using the um, DriveLock uh, ISO uh, right at the moment, and one of the first things we need to do is create a, um, a service account, just a regular user account that the DriveLock Enterprise Service will use to connect to the SQL database, and also will run uh, privileged as that user. So uh, this user doesn't require any specific um, permissions, so we will call it SVCDES, a convention that we use. Um, you can name it whatever you want, but for this purpose, we're going to use what's in the manual. So um, we need to set a password. And then we need to make sure that it never expires. And this, as you see, is not anything other than a normal domain user. So we'll double click on the CD ROM and go to English and click on installation. And this brings up the uh, drive lock. DL setup executable and and you see here normally what we would do uh, it's recommended that we install SQL server first then the enterprise service and then we can install the management console control center and manuals if you are installing this on a 2008 R2 server that is just joined to the domain um, you can click on this checkbox here click on next and basically uh, I think there's two other nexts and it will install and you don't have to answer any questions. For our purposes, since we're on an Active Directory controller, we have to do it by hand. It's still pretty straightforward. So we'll browse content of the CD <clears throat> and we'll right click here and run the SQL Express uh, installation package. As with everything Windows-y, it'll take a second here to come up. And we want to click on New Installation. And we accept the terms and click Next. Okay, and here we can click Next. Now, here is where um, you can leave this SQL Express um, if you were to use the automated installer. Um, so again, if you had a 2008 R2 server just joined to the domain and you click that bottom checkbox to install the named instance that it will use, because you will not get this configuration screen, is called DriveLock. And so we're going to do the same thing here so that it's consistent. Um, if you were to do it that way. So click Next. Here you will want to drop down the account name and select NT Authority System. Click Next. And we need to add that service account to uh, the SQL Server Administrator. So SVC Des. Check it. OK. Click Next. Click Next, and 
back in. We wait. All right, so we're almost done here. Um, it says we completed successfully. That's always a good sign. And you can now close the SQL Server Installation Center. We can go back to um, our drive lock CD browser piece here. Click on Installation. Again, it'll bring up our DL setup as before. Now we can click on Enterprise Service. Click Next click next and it says installed but actually what it's going to do is launch the installer at this point it's a little bit confusing but not all that much so click next accept the terms of the license and here is uh, where we specify our SVC DES so this is that service account that we created check let's make sure it's correct and then we put in our password and then click next it'll validate and we'll create a self-signed certificate and if you have a firewall um, you can check this and we'll automatically put in the service ports I do not have a firewall enabled uh, in my particular setup but um, we'll leave it checked it doesn't hurt anything All right, so we can click on finish, and then it'll pop up the database installation wizard. Okay. Um, for our purposes here, again, this is a demonstration box. We're going to just leave this uh, as it is. And then what we need to do here is type in the full name of the, um, well, or the short name of the, of the machine that has a SQL Server instance. Um, we can, since we're installing on the same machine, we can use localhost. Um, and DriveLock was the name of the instance we had. Um, for my purposes, the name of this machine is Des. Um, so I will leave that there. We'll test the connection and see if it can make the connection to our database server. And again, like I said, since we're on this server, uh, we can make it localhost and we can test the connection. It will also show up correct. All right, we'll click Next. Um, generally speaking, you probably don't want to change these um, unless you have, if you're installing to a SQL Server out in your farm, you would make this different. But again, for our purposes, this is just fine. These two accounts here 
um, and people kind of next over this and they, they don't really know what it means and then they have problems uh, a little bit later so these are the count, uh, accounts <clears throat> that allow you to um, have full control to the drive lock control center and to the management console so if you make these accounts uh, a different domain account say for instance your account then in order to have full administrative privileges on that uh, drive lock control center at least for the first time before you create other users you would have to put in your credentials so we're going to leave this as the domain administrator and go forward and then we'll click next and uh, we will wait all right database installation was good click next um, these are two settings that um, you can configure now or configure later um, for our purposes I'm going to turn these off uh, what this does is um, deletes events in the database and does a daily database backup in a production environment you would certainly want to enable these if you have hundreds or thousands of, of, of uh, endpoints but again for demonstration purposes you probably want to keep as many events as possible so you can see you know what's going on and, and what you may be doing right or wrong click next click finish and we are good to go we will now install the last components uh, which will be the management console the control center and the documentation and manuals click next click next again and it will install these components and they are all installed you can now close the uh, browser windows and we'll see here if we go to all programs we have center tools drive lock and we now have um, our management console uh, a direct link to the local policy on this machine um, and we're good to go and, and we'll cover the uh, initial configuration and uh, other aspects in the next video thank you very much